Well, hello there. Good morning and welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the AM show here on Join News. And if you've been with me since the morning, well, I'm glad that you're still here. So we're getting into our major, major conversation of this morning. And I'm sure it's top of your mind, um, top of everybody's mind, the budget 2022 and the happenings in Parliament. Um, so we're going to get into that conversation. Joining me this morning, um, Roxin Nelson Dafiamepo. Dafiamepo. <laughs> you must start it with time. And my kids are everywhere as well, <laughs> but I, I, I don't, yeah. Okay, so, so yes, I'm not going to try and, and repeat, repeat it. Um, he's the MP for South Day. And Vincent Echo Asifa, who is the MP for TAFO. Um, a little later on, we'll be joined by some governance and um, legal experts as well. So, um, okay, so Dr. Rashid Draman will be joining us, Executive Director, Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs, and Professor Lon Mensa, Senior Lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School. Um, good morning, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. I see you came with um, the Constitution <laughs> and um, some legal documents. Gosh, okay. Um, let's get into the conversation, though. So I started off this morning um, saying that we all expected that something like this, well, most Ghanaians expect that something like this will happen at some point, but the way that Parliament um, was split. So let me just start off this way. Were you expecting, and um, Vincent, let me start with you. Were you expecting it to be this soon, this kind of, you know, gridlock, headlock, stamping feet, walking out, um, we disagree on things. Were you expecting it to be this soon? Well, let me say a very good morning to you, to you, our cherished viewers, and my good friend, lawyer Dafia Mokoko. Did I mention it well? You tried. Okay. <laughs> um, on Friday, mm -hmm. the Ghanaian people were watching with so much eagerness and anxiousness uh, to see the eighth parliament of Ghana to be able to pass the 2022 budget statement and economic policy. Unfortunately for us, the attitude of the Speaker of Parliament, the Right Honorable Alban Bagben, uh, was quite uh, irresponsible. Uh, his actions were reckless and to put it it was a devil maker I'll say this because the whole issue was triggered because of how he led the House of Parliament that Friday now if you check the standing orders of parliament, or before I even come to the standing orders, I will check from the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, which clearly speaks about the rule that vice president, ministers of state, deputy ministers of state can also play in the House of Parliament. Now, if you check Article 111, clearly states that the vice president or a minister or a deputy minister who is not a member of parliament shall be entitled to participate in the proceedings of parliament. Emphasis mine. Shall be entitled to participate in the proceedings of parliament and shall be accorded all the privileges of a member of parliament. Shall be accorded all the privileges of a member of parliament. So you're saying this in reference to the finance minister being I'll get asked there. to leave? Yeah, I'll okay. get there. All the privileges of a member of parliament, except that he is not entitled to vote. All the privileges of a member of parliament. And so the finance minister, the deputy finance minister, who were in the chamber at plenary, were supposed to be accorded all the privileges of a member of parliament whilst in chamber. And so, if the deputy majority leader calls for a division, and calling for that division will mean that the lobby will have to be cleared. And the standing of this of parliament is also very clear. If you check the standing order 114, 
it said that in the case of a division, Mr. Speaker shall direct that the lobbies be cleared. It didn't say the plenary will have to be cleared. Remember, I've already read Article 111, which suggests that a minister of state or a deputy minister of state who is at plenary will have to be accorded all the privileges as a member of parliament. Does it not also say that um, non-members of parliament, when there's a division, are required to leave? Where did you say that? No, I'm asking. Does no, it not also no, say no, that? No, that's what I'm saying. That Article 111 of the Constitution says that members of parliament are supposed to be accorded all the privileges of a member of parliament. And of course, they are entitled to participate in all proceedings in the House. But they don't have a voting right. So I am saying that on what grounds that the speaker, who at the beginning of every proceedings in parliament, reads the opening prayers and tell every Ghanaian that Ghana is a country of peace, where government shall rest on the will of the people and the love for the common good. We'll have to give such a ruling and say that the finance minister who has brought his budget in parliament and of course was in parliament that day for a specific reason and that reason was to call for more time for engagement because of the issues that have been raised by the minority. How on earth do you call a marshal that the marshal will now have to go and lead the driving away of the finance minister and the deputy finance minister, especially when there is no imminent threat to the proceedings of parliament, or there is a presumption that the finance minister is going to, as it were, be a stumbling block in the proceedings of parliament, that you direct the marshal that they should sack the finance minister and the, the other people out there. I don't understand how you make this ruling. And that is the reason, that is the trigger for where we are now. And that is why I described the Speaker of Parliament's conduct as a devil maker. And Ghana may be in a standstill because of how the Speaker of Parliament has decided to lead the House. I see. It is very unfortunate. Mm. It is a sad day for Ghana. This is not an issue of the majority or the minority. But this is the kind of leadership that the Right Honorable Agban Babin has decided to show to the people of Ghana. And it is now leading Ghana to a point where we don't have to get to. Okay, so if um, I'm getting you clearly, your issue, first of all, is with the way that the Speaker of Parliament handled. That is the trigger. The, okay, so that's the trigger. Um, that's, that's okay. So um, what, 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 what do you think? I, I am restraining myself. Oh, don't to, restrain yourself. No, no, Let's no, no. Because, you see, Vincent is, is a close friend. Mm. I would have gone ballistic on him. <laughs> but I won't. I will maintain my composure. Okay. And I will urge him to withdraw the use of the, 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 the use of language like an irresponsible conduct on the part of the, the right honorable speaker, um, devil maker, all those things, mm. or devil making, I will urge him to withdraw and apologize to the speaker. It will serve him well. He's a young person in parliament. We are all young, but at least I, I'm senior to him. At least I'm senior to him. We should, yeah, yeah, bro. we should take our the, time. The, the statement that minority issue. No, no, hold on. The heading of the statement. Hold on. That the majority leader was irresponsible. I mean, no, what, but you don't, you don't, but you, but you cannot, you can say minority who were irresponsible. That would be fine. But you cannot direct an irresponsible. You see, the same standing order says you cannot impugn improper motive to the speaker. You mm. cannot question the, the, the act of the speaker. You can't. You can't do that. So you don't sit on a national TV and do that. We are young people. We must take our time when there are issues. The seniors can say some of those things, but we young people, we should make our points without being uh, uh, using vile language. I see. Okay. That being said, mm. it is most inaccurate 
for the majority to allege that the conduct of the speaker on the day was um, one that was, uh, was not above uh, uh, reproach. Okay. Why? They brought, they brought a statement to Parliament mm -hmm. that we were to meet on Friday at 10 a.m. Okay. The business statement that was submitted indicated clearly that, were, that the leaders were to conclude the debate on Friday. Okay. Now, business was scheduled to commence at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. At 10 a.m., we got to Parliament by 8.30. Mm -hmm. Had our caucus meeting by 9. Mm -hmm. And by 9, 9.30, the minority were ready. Okay. From 10 a.m. till about 1.45 p.m., the majority refused to step in the chamber. Okay. What's the, what's the reason for that? Hold on. Well, hold, hold on. He, he, he refused well, to speak. To, himself, hold on. Oh, please, 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 that please, please, please. He, he refused to speak to those things. Okay. As a very responsible party leading government, mm -hmm. you refuse to come and lead government business. At 1.45, Speaker was compelled to call the House to order and suspend the House because you were nowhere to be found. He had to be told in the chamber that you were holding a caucus meeting. You needed 30 minutes. Between 10 a.m. and 1.45, the MPP still needed 30 minutes to hold a caucus meeting. That 30 minutes that speaker suspended the house and gave them, they sauntered into the chamber at 3.45 p.m. Speaker entered the chamber or resumed proceedings at 4 p.m. After some initial issues, the leaders concluded the debate. Okay, I really want Hold you on. to continue. One second. Yes. But I really want um, Vincent to confirm for me that this is indeed what happened. Um, the NPP did not show up till 3.45. At 1.45, you asked for 30 minutes. True or well, false? Le let me answer by saying this. Assuming for a true or false, <laughs> true or false, then you can explain. Yeah, I think that's fair. No, true, true or false, false then, you then you can, can explain. explain. True or false later. No, 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 no. I think we should true. set that. Then you explain well, the, well, the, the well, answer. Well, then you, then you false. No, I'm not host. Because I, think, just to no, tidy I up. think that context just, is important. I was very quiet. So if we're picking quiet from, the, we're from the back to the front, yes. then it's difficult for our listeners to follow yes. the events that happen. So you were supposed to meet at 10 o'clock. It is true. It's true that you showed up at 3.45. There was a delay in the majority appearing in the house, but don't forget that the finance minister was in the for house three and a on. half for three hours forty five minutes. Please, please, please. please the please. finance no, minister. He was, when he was talking, was, I was very quiet because I wanted he, I wanted asked the me people. A I wonderful. just wanted him to clarify that we can't are looking for very simple answer. Friend. I mean, we are still <laughs> our friends. It's not that I am saying. Let me answer this question. Okay, so, if, so the finance If you want us to put that yes. aside, then, then well, we, we cannot we, put that aside. We do, we'll the, the, finance, the, the finance that, that minister was in the chamber mm -hmm. asking the House, or if you like, the Speaker of Parliament that he needed more time to put do chamber. negotiation and uh, put uh, chamber. negotiation. Please, Hold my co-host says which chamber? Your co <laughs> Which chamber? Because this is where the situation was not in any chamber. He, he was... See, they should stop Hold confusing on. themselves. No, no, Hold on. No, no, no. no. My brother, see, my brother. The first, the, first, the first question that was put by the Speaker of Parliament was that... The finance we haven't gotten there. No, I'm we haven't given no, the no, no, why no, we delayed. No, we haven't gotten there. Let me there. give you the reason. No, because up until no, 3 45, there between, was no actual. The no, between 10 a.m. and 3 1 and 3 45 p.m. Yes. There was no, the, nothing I was actually. That is what I'm explaining. Exactly. I'm explaining so, to you. No, no, that so I agree that. There was a reason, and that reason was that we needed to do more consultations for the budget. Okay, so can I continue? You get it. We okay, I, I think okay. it is on that basis that we came to Parliament. Okay, can I continue? more time. Can I continue? How, How are you consulting on the budget you. after the budget on Thank that you. day? Is Thank that not you. supposed to be Thank done you. the engagement Before. in the consultation? Thank you. Not can normally I? on the House, of, uh, if like, in the House of Chamber, because the executive arm of government will now have to do the proper consultation. And I agree that indeed, we need to do some revision as far as the budget is concerned. So why, why was it directed that that issue should be, should be concluded by Friday if, you know, all these things had to so be done? Let me, let me, finish, let let me continue with let my standard procedure. Hold mm -hmm. on. Let me continue with my, my, 
Yes, so the people who were complaining about the conduct of speaker mm -hmm. themselves sat out for five, almost six hours. Yeah. Without, without finding it necessary to come and lead their own business in the chamber. Almost six hours. And you want to blame speaker? Is speaker the majority leader? Speaker was even magnanimous to the extent that he saw it fit to suspend, to contain you. If the finance minister came to parliament and is walking about, he didn't come to the chamber to do any consultation. Okay. So if he's consulting the majority themselves, that is their business. Okay. But our business was for them to come so we go ahead with whatever had been planned for the day. It took them six hours. Now speaker comes, then they, they, then they suggest that the business that has been scheduled for the day, for the leaders to conclude the debate, should be suspended so that the finance minister will now move a motion to hold further consultation. If this is not incompetence, I don't know what it is. You prepare a budget, now you want to consult on the budget. Because you see, we began to raise issues with the budget. So procedurally, they got everything wrong. He's, he's reading some law. And, and he says what? After the leaders concluded the debate, instead of the question being put, they now stampeded the house to allow the finance minister to move a motion. Hold on. Meanwhile, the question that was supposed to be put was already in respect of motion number 10. And this is the motion that this honorable house approves the budget statement and economic policy of the government for the year ending 31st December 2022. Moved on Wednesday, 17th November 2021, by the Honorable Minister for Finance, Mr. Ken Oforiata, and seconded on Tuesday, 23rd November 2021, by the Honorable Member for Obasi West, Mr. Kwekwajman. So, okay, so this was Wednesday. Hold this on. was moved on Wednesday. Hold on. But I no, think no. after hold the on. public's hold reaction. Hold on. hold on. You see, I want to take this methodically. Okay. The Finance Minister had already moved the House. To approve the budget. To approve the budget. But okay. it doesn't negate. Hold on. Can come Hold on. As for Hold on. Time. Then the majority leader now says that he, he is supposed to be given opportunity to move a further motion. To ask it to have varied this motion. You understand me? Okay. Oh, the speaker accommodated you. You, 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 you get my point? I speaker accommodated you. I completely understand. And you go out and you sort speaker. Okay, so right now, Hold this, on. this it's not, I'm not done. Right, okay. <laughs> then they lost, then the vote, then the question was put. Then they lost the voice vote. Mm. And you know why clearing the lobby in, 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 within the terms of order 114 was necessary? No, tell us. Because the deputy majority leader contested the outcome of the voice vote. How was the voice vote conducted? They asked those who were in favor of the motion that the, the finance minister okay. be, be, be given opportunity to consult further. They lost it. Where was the finance minister sitting when the yes vote were, were, were if the voice vote were, were delivered? He was sitting among them. The finance minister was not the only minister of state in the chamber. We had the minister of transport in the chamber. We had the Minister of State in charge of Minister of Finance in the chamber. Okay. And my, hold on. Clarify hold, for me. No, no. no on hold the same on. point, just hold, clarify yes. this for me. For our listeners who don't know the proceedings yes. of yes. Parliament, and because what you're saying is very key, when you talk about a voice vote, yes. it is when you guys shout there. Yes, we don't so shout. It's, don't say that we shout. <laughs> so I mean, I'm saying that so the, the yes or the no is yes. in terms of volume. Thank you. Which is why then it is imperative that people who do not Thank actually you. have a vote. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Where it comes no, 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 no. It's important. No, you read the what constitution the to create a mischief. A and I want, the gallery, no, and I want, and I want to cure that mischief. You can still be the gallery. You can't be in the gallery can. and do that. You can't. Please, you can't. You can't be in the gallery. Okay, let me, let me go to oh, um, Professor uh, Lord Mensah for dear, a second. Let me I'll finish, come, then I'll you come back. You are here with me. No, I'll come back no, no. to you. You, 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 you are... Uh, okay, two uh, minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Uninterrupted, Thank please. you. They lost the voice, voice vote and, and proceeded under the 113. 
and call for a division. When you call for a division, procedurally, the lobbies will have to be cleared. And in clearing the lobbies, you take out all non-members non, non of parliament. Okay. How are, why are they concerned about Ken Oforiata and not about the Minister of Transport? Hmm. Or, 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 or Edubwain? Is he not a Minister of State? Or the, or, or the Foreign Affairs Minister, Ayokobotri? Why is it this focus on Ken Oforiata? He was not the only Minister of State in the chamber. So they cannot, majority, the, 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 the MPP, cannot determine the rules for Parliament today. This rules, Michael Kwe applied it. And before Michael Kwe was applied by Sechi Hughes and Doha Jaho and all. So why is it that today when we, are, when we want to vote, when we want to do a head count, Ophoriata must sit in the chamber so that he will, so that he will add to their vote? Oh, okay. This is the same party that when we but, voted... But the get, they, was not adding to their vote. Please, the he was sitting in the gallery. And, get and, the and difference. His eye, and get the eye, difference. Be sitting. I get the difference, but I'm please. not saying that. Okay, please, I'm going to switch to the of Professor Palo. Lord Mensa now. He's a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School. Gentlemen, can I please speak to... Okay, I need five minutes to speak to Professor Lord Mensa, and then we'll come back and continue. Um, good morning, Prof. Yeah, good morning to you, and then uh, good morning to our viewers, uh, the okay. panelists and the studio. <laughs> I'm sure you're following the conversation. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, um, so right now we're having a, a, a back and forth on, on the, you know, on the process and who should be there and who shouldn't be there and all of that. I mean, you have been following it since Friday. What's your initial take on what's been going on so far? Yeah, I think, um, you see, this is a business of the government. And it's a business of the nation. And obviously, I'm not in, I cannot speak to whether this, is, this person is supposed to be there or the other person is not supposed to be there or not. I don't know the parliamentary procedures that much. But then um, my understanding is that the factions in parliament should be able to understand that, you know, this has an economic impact. Already the country is losing, you know, because we need the government business to start running, you know. And so if we keep on delay, and then as a result of that, the delay does not save us much cost. I think we are causing the country a big, a big problem. And so my belief is that the two parties should come to a convergent point. And I believe what the minority is requiring from the uh, majority is not much of a problem. I mean, the, the, the budget comes with certain policies that majority, minority thinks it will be overburdening Ghanaians. And if it will overburden Ghanaians, then obviously there should be, you know, a way of, you know, coming to a convergent point, a point where maybe a levy has been introduced and minority things is so much then it has to be reduced. A point where certain policies are, you know, um, required by the current administration and minority things, it will put the country at a risk. And so they should come to a point where they will all compromise. Now, if you take what is being required by the uh, mi minority, clearly, I think um, I can put it in five things uh, where I believe, I believe that um, when the government sit down and if consultations were to go on uh, uh, properly, I don't think we would have got into this, um, you know, still made kind of uh, budget uh, discussions. Now, um, if you look at the numbers in parliament now, uh, clearly you realize that these days you cannot easily have your way through. The numbers are almost equal. We're talking about 137, 137 there about, and an independent candidate coming in. And of course, you may never know who can swindle, who can swing to one, the other side. Looking at what happened during the elections of uh, the speaker, I watch it I mean, throughout the night. And it gives you the signal. It was giving us the signal that mm. the parliament this now um, is going to be a complete parliament, different parliament altogether, for which you may want to roll out policies as a government, but you won't have your, your way as, as um, it used to be. Yeah. And so if, if, if um, you want to introduce new things that 
uh, you think in a way it will overburden Ghanaians, we should have, I mean, done a proper consultations at both, you know, ends of the parties uh, of, of, of parliament before, you know, even the budget will, will, will be read. So uh, for me, this is something that we can easily come to a point where we will, we will accept at both sides. Um, I, I understand that majority, minority is talking about, you know, the Y levy, the 1.75, which they think is not, you know, um, 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 a pro poor kind of, you know. Um, um, prof, uh, prof, before we, we get into the um, substantive issues of the contents of the budget, um, I, I would like to finish up the procedure issues. Um, and also the, the, the governance issues, because I think it's about decision making. So before we get to the economy, um, let's talk about the decision making aspect of it, because ultimately um, nothing has been decided. As, as you're, you're meeting tomorrow, um, are you going to show up on time? Parliament you know, has I'll... decided. Mm -hmm. Parliament has decided. It's, it's my turn. Parliament, no, no it's, it's not your turn. turn. It's you, my turn. you stole some of my but time. The question was addressed to who? No, it's addressed to me. Oh. Parliament oh, has taken a decision. You're now determining what is. Parliament has taken a decision. <laughs> the budget has been rejected. What they are out there saying is that they disagree with that decision or they are contesting that decision. And our standing orders are very clear that if you, if you disagree with the position of the House, you know what to do. So they intend to file a motion, okay. which we are ready for them tomorrow. Okay. But, okay. but let us get this. Let nobody suggest that the finance minister had the right mm. to stay in the chamber okay. during head count. Okay. I think so. That's your yes, substance. Yes, head count. He has no right to be there. That's okay. okay. But I'll give you the chance to respond. And, and, I want to and, speak and to. Let me, let me, let me top it up. How does hey, a this my no, no, how right now, dear. No, 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 how does a government bring the budget to parliament and walk away from the budget? From the they were consulted. Let me have They were consulted. I also approve the budget. So I actually want Dr. Rashid Raman to answer that question. But you have allowed him to speak. Dr. Rashid, I'll come back to you. Dr. Rashid Raman, the executive director for Africa Centre for Parliamentary Affairs. And um, good morning, Dr. Jaman. Good morning. Okay. So good morning so, to honorable uh, members and uh, the professor. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, you just had the question um, that was asked here. How does um, Parliament or how do members of Parliament bring to the floor um, representing government something that they are trying to put through, which is the budget, and then walk away um, from it? I think you probably no, the no, best no person. No members of Parliament. I'm saying, how does a party forming a government party forming submit government submit a budget for approval? Submit a budget for approval. Away, they show emotional immaturity and because you walk away from the. Can budget. we please let you Dr. 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 Draman? So I think that you're probably the better the place to referee this match um, that's going on in the studio. So what do you think, I mean, about what has happened so far? Well, I mean, maybe let me answer the first, uh, the first question. Uh, in, in all my, you know, dealings with our parliament, I mean, for the past 20 years, I've been following and working closely uh, with our parliament. Uh, I have never seen this happen. Of course, we are uh, in a different time altogether. This, this new parliament is unlike any other parliament that we have seen before. And then when you take it uh, on the African continent and globally, I have never seen uh, a walkout by the party that is that is in government, I mean, walking away from, uh, from their own party. So I have never seen that. So this is a first. And, uh, and perhaps we might have to do some studies to try and understand maybe what is all behind this. But let me come to this whole uh, kind of uh, my impression about uh, what, what is going on currently. You know, when I reflect carefully over what is going on, the question I keep asking myself, because we have done many studies and uh, over the years, you know, uh, we have categorized parliaments into three. Uh, when it comes to budget making powers, you have maybe at the top the, uh, the budget making parliaments, parliaments that have real power to make the budget. Then you have the budget influencing parliaments, 
in the middle. And at the bottom, you have parliaments that do not have very much uh, power uh, to make or influence the budget. And over the years, we have placed our parliament in the third category. And I think that all of a sudden I woke up to realize that no, it looks like our parliament uh, has real powers and can be in the category of either the first or the second. But what it means is that over the years, Ghanaians, ordinary citizens like us, have been shortchanged by, by both parties, mainly because of the numbers that they have in the House. So that we've never seen a situation, whether in the sixth parliament, in the fifth parliament, fourth, third, when a challenge like this has been mounted when it came to approving the policies uh, of government so that the budget process can, can run its course. And I think it's, 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 quite, it's quite unfortunate for, for our country. So what is happening now uh, is opening up, you know, if you like, uh, some window in terms of uh, our budget politics and so on and so forth. And then another aspect of it, if I may add, is that over the year, I mean, sorry, at the beginning of the year, uh, right from January 7, after I mean, uh, what characterized the election of the speaker, some of us have been calling for, you know, a lot of consensus, a lot of dialogue between the two sides. Because even when you have, I mean, big numbers, you always have to make sure that, I mean, democracy is not one-sided and decisions that are taken by parliament uh, are not one-sided. We need continuous dialogue, continuous uh, building of consensus. Um, I hear the Minister of Finance, I mean, making a prayer for the right honorable speaker to allow him to do some consultation with the minority side to build some consensus. It was a very good initiative, but I thought that it came rather too late. I mean, that was not the time, the moment that the votes are going to be counted was not the moment for this consensus building. I would have thought that, you know, right from the day the budget was read, the minority raised a lot of concerns. I think the Minister of Finance and his team, as well as perhaps the leadership of parliament, would have, you know, if you like, uh, tried to engage the minority to try and understand their concerns, so that if there was anything that needed to be done, because at the end of the day, we must all remember, even in advanced democracies, look, President Biden took several trillions of dollars of a bill to Congress. At the end of it all, he got half of what he was asking for. So usually there is a lot of negotiation and there's a lot of give and take. The NDC might not have all the kind of uh, his demands, uh, you know, um, accommodated in the budget. But I believe there are certain demands that can be accommodated because the finance minister, from where he sits, has the bigger picture in terms of the envelope that we have, in terms of what we need uh, as resources to run the country. The yeah, parliament must also be concerned, I mean, not only checking expenditure, but must be concerned about how we generate the revenues and so on. Exactly. So I think uh, some dialogue is needed and some continuous discussion. Okay, so the, um, the minority um, have listed five things that they want amended if they're going to approve the budget. So I'm sure um, tomorrow that will come up. But I just wanted to find out, do you think that when we finished the elections and this parliament was integrated, perhaps we should have done a little bit more consultation into clearing up um, situations like this? Because this kind of thing hasn't happened um, since I think it was Liman. That was the last time that something that, like this happened. And because of the numbers, we always knew that there will be, you know, some sort of issues that may come up. Do we now, is this a good time to now say, okay, let's look at some of these issues. Let's put procedures in place to address how these things are handled. Um, should we do that? Or are we just going to continue to kind of play it by ear. So every time there's a major issue, you know, one side of parliament can decide, I'm going to walk out, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. No, I think, uh, honestly, uh, we were expecting a lot of gridlock right from day one, when this parliament was inaugurated. And I mean, some of us said the way to avoid a gridlock is uh, to have some kind of mechanism in place. Mm. 
Uh, there are going to be a lot of surprises. I mean, this is not the end. We have three more years to run the course of this eight parliament. So the earlier the two sides uh, sit down and make sure that, uh, that you know, some kind of mechanisms are put in place to deal with some of these thorny issues, I think the better for both parties. Because look, the message is this. Uh, the, the, the MDC has to play its role in terms of holding the government to account. Accountable, okay. The, MP, the MPP has to play its role in terms of uh, running the government. Hmm. But, you know, when you have situations where we have gridlock and then it starts biting citizens, then, you know, the NDC might begin to lose to lose uh, favor from citizens because uh, uh, their actions might begin to have some counter effect. So they have to be very pragmatic in terms of how to deal with this, uh, how to use their numbers. And they have to be uh, careful the choice of um, issues and matters that they deal with. Uh, of course, they have to play their role and they have to I mean, hold the, the feet of the government to, to the fire. But you know they have to be very measured in this, so okay. that at the end of the day, their actions can have the the, the needed effect of projecting them as a as a as a, as a good uh, alternative. Alternative, uh, okay. Current disposition that we have. Okay, thank you so much for that, um, Dr. Rashid Draman, Executive Director, Africa Centre for Parliamentary Affairs. Thank you for your time this morning. So I, I, want, to, I want to talk to Professor Lord Mensah um, so that we can just conclude on some of the issues concerning the economy. Then I can come back in studio and then um, give Vincent the chance. He's bursting with so much um, to say. Give him the chance um, to express how, how he feels about it. So Prof, um, just on the actual economy, economy, I mean, what does it mean if, if this issue cannot be sorted out quickly? What does it mean for us? Because we're all wondering how much 2022 is going to cost us. We're wondering, you know, how much power even, you know, does the minority have to, to sort of hold the legs of, of Ken of Foriata, I'm just using his name to represent the institution, um, to amend things such as the e-levy, which is what the uh, minority are asking for. They have five issues that they want um, to be addressed, the Keta defense project um, as well. What, 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 what does this mean for us in terms of money in our pockets? Yeah, well, um, if you look at the happenings, uh, you should understand that in management of every economy, a delay is a cost. I mean, so if they should hold on, you know, with this back and forth and um, we prolong uh, the approval of the budget, I think it's going to cost the country more. And the situation where immediately after the budget was read, we started implementing some of the things in it without necessarily waiting for approval, all these things comes at a cost. So for me, I think it's about time they have um, they, they, they get to a convergent point so that the country can start running. Um, the majority shouldn't hold it up that um, they will have their way because um, of numbers or because uh, they are in power. I think when it comes to negotiations, sometimes you have to give in and then allow some things to go. And in the end, um, we can all have a country Ghana to run. So effectively, and then let's also note that with this, um, investors are watching. We live in a country where government spending is what stimulates the economy. And so uh, it's not a private sector. And so um, we, we, should be, we should be careful because um, the investor is watching us, um, looking at what is going to happen? And if we continue to, to, to go back and forth, I think um, they will start moving out of the country. So let's, let's be careful how we go about this. I believe uh, tomorrow, which is Tuesday, when they meet, um, with the days that the weekend and over, there has been some consultations behind us. And um, on Tuesday, we will get approval for this budget. Okay, well, thank you. Um, you sound hopeful. So maybe we should take a cue from that. Thank you very much. For the budget, Which budget? Yeah. the 2022 budget. The 2022 budget has been rejected. 
the professor should understand that. Okay, we are coming to that. Uh, you can I say hold thank on, you to him? You should advise the government to doing this. You cannot be doing this. To su allow to swallow a bitter pill. Go back. No, 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 no. You cannot. And do the right thing and come back. Madam host. And stop time. saying that my time. by tomorrow yes. we should expect the budget approved. Thank you very much, professor. professor. Parliament has already yes. taken a decision. No, his opinion is wrong. He has said his opinion. He should be condemning the government for their conduct. Let me come to you now because I think you. You cannot put something on nothing. You cannot. Under no circumstance will you ever convince me or even a 12-year-old child that this budget has been rejected. You cannot put something on nothing. Now, the standing orders of parliament, mm -hmm. Article 10, um, section, um, Order 109, which has been lifted in a stencil from the constitution of the Republic of Ghana, mm -hmm. that is Article 104. It's mm -hmm. very clear on how voting is supposed to be done in the House okay. of Parliament. Yes. And now even the heading is voting in the House. That um, Order 109 says that no question for decision in the House. No question, emphasis mine, for decision in the House shall be proposed for determination unless they are present in the House not less than one half of all the members of, of the House, and except otherwise provided in the Constitution. The question proposed shall be determined by the majority of the votes of the members present in voting. Okay. Now, simple mathematics. Mm -hmm. There cannot be any mathematical sense okay. to ever conclude that the House of Parliament, at the time that the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, Urban Babin, was seated as a Speaker of Parliament, mm -hmm. ever had that number as, as required by the Constitution of the Republic and the Standing Orders of Parliament. Because we are 275 members of Parliament, mm -hmm. you need one half, which is 137.5, which you can safely run it up to 138. 38. You cannot be 137 and tell me, and if the, prof, uh, the able professor is telling you that, hopefully, the budget will have to be passed. Then you don't understand why he is saying that the budget will have to be passed. Because clearly every reasoned person out there knows that this budget has not been passed because Were it was you passed by 137. Were you 138? No, how can you even ask can this question? Let him finish. Okay. I will let him finish. I will how how can handle you even him. Ask this question. That were they 138? The members of parliament who are at the NDC side, which is the minority, per the records, officially, they are 137. You cannot assume, you cannot presume, under no circumstance, to ever think that it can make a mathematical sense for anybody to assume that, oh, the NDC was, were having 138. No, that cannot happen. So I am telling you okay. that there hasn't been any approval or whatsoever with respect approval or so a rejection approval. or whatsoever with respect to the budget that was tabled in the house okay whatever the speaker of parliament and the minority did in the house of parliament at that day is unconstitutional it is illegal and for that matter it is safely declared as ultra virus we the majority side walked out of parliament and i have to make that point clear that it is not as if the majority side were working out from their own budget. No. What preceded the supposed workout is an essential and critical background that all of us will have to understand. Very, very essential. Because you cannot tell me that people who come to the House of Parliament, some of them will have to leave, but others will have to stay. The NPP side or which is, if you like, the majority side of parliament worked out because the laws, or if you like, the speaker's discretion was not applied in a fair and just manner. If you are asking the finance minister to leave, the general secretary of the party should also leave because eyes and nose are going to be made based on noise. Whatever you sit in the chamber, you can say aye. Whatever you sit in the chamber, you can say no. It, it, it is possible that it will affect the judgment of the Speaker of Parliament. It is on that basis that the majority side was calling for fairness and just with the ruling and discretion by the Speaker of Parliament. Nobody should ever deceive himself that the minority side, per the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, 
and the standing orders of parliament, which governs the proceedings of the House, has ever rejected any um, um, budget statement. No, they, they don't have that legal right. They don't have that mandate to reject any budget. All members of parliament will be in the House tomorrow. God and willing. God willing. And we are now going to ascertain whether there was a supposed rejection or otherwise. Hmm. Okay. Um, can I, can like I come in? Yes, yeah, sure. He's blowing hot air. A lot of hot air. Let me, uh, let me school him small. When you call for a division, hmm? a division means a vote has already been taken. Mm -hmm. It's like an appeal in a court case. You are aggrieved with the outcome. So you are appealing that a certain process be initiated. Who called for the division? Their deputy majority leader. He called for the division. When he called for a division, certain processes will have to be taken into consideration. How is that done? There must be a head count. You cannot expect a stranger to sit in the house when we are doing a head count. And, that, and, and I'm so scandalized that they are, on, they are they are, they, are, they, are, they are refusing to appreciate that. Defined by that, what? Hold on. Please, Defined by no, what? When you were talking, I was quiet. Oh, senior, you please, please do that. Please. Defined by what? Please. Yeah, article 111 please. is very clear. I am, please. On, please. on the privileges no, no, that we are supposed to be met. Uh, please. please. To the vice please. president. Are you saying Vincent, that? Vincent. To the vice president. Vincent. The house, you Vincent. Start Vincent. Don't, senior, don't, don't, don't let our senior. friendship suffer today. No, no, it will not suffer. That is why when you are speaking, I keep quiet. I could, I could interject, I could say things, He's quiet. but I keep quiet. He's quiet uh, now. Mr. Co-host, I'm quiet. Thank you. Now, you, you, when you call for a division, there are procedures to be followed. No stranger in the house. How is Ophoria Tanda, these circumstances, not a stranger? I am even surprised that he will sat there and took part in the voice vote. Mm. Four of them sat and took part in the voice vote. Took part? That is even an issue we'll be raising. Took part? They ought not to have taken part in the voice vote, but they did. And still lost that one. Now, all the motions on the floor in question were moved by, by, by the MPP. All the two motions. The first, the first motion, which, which vote was to have been taken, is motion number 10, moved by the finance minister. Mm -hmm. The second, in fact, three motions. The second motion which was also moved by the finance minister to hold further consultation, which vote was taken and they lost. And the third one, which was moved by the deputy majority, uh, majority leader, to call for a division. When you call for a division, that a decision must be taken. Speaker must agree that, yes, a division has indeed been validly called. So when you do all this and you walk away, when you move a motion for a vote to be taken on it, a vote has been taken. You have called for a division. Head, heads were to be counted. And before heads will be counted, you walked out to go and watch Pemper College wins natural mass and science quiz. So minority wait for you or should parliament wait for you? In any case, you didn't tell parliament why you were going out. You have called for a division. You walk away. Speakers will beg you. So why did hold you call on, for a division and walk hold away? Hold on. Let me let me show you no, the law. Let, let me show let him the law. Hold on. Hold on. Let me. And that, let hold me on. Question. Hold on. No, the host no. is asking a question. No, no, no. no. That it's, question. It's, it's the host fine. is asking a question. question. Will be addressed. Like, let, but the host is asking no, a question. No, no, hold on with the standing orders. Don't run quickly and take advantage of that. Hold on with the standing orders. That question. The host has asked the question. Let me read the law. Or the one one three sub rule one. When the question has been to, put to, to have allowed by Mr. The Speaker this at the conclusion of the debate, the vote shall be taken by voices I and no, provided that Mr. Speaker may, in his discretion, instead of declaring the result and the voice vote, call for a head count. Now, sub rule 5 says a member is not obliged to vote. So when you call for a division and you walk out, the, the rule says you are not obliged to vote. We didn't work out at that Please, time. You ah, no. when, at what stage did not you work that, out? Not at that time. You okay. called for a division and walked out. Let's no? clarify. At what stage did you work out? If after calling for the division. After the decision or the discretion that was exercised by the Speaker of Parliament, that 
the finance minister and other members who were in the house who are supposed to be let protected. Me, let me show you the law. Let me show you. Hold on. Let me show you the law of the Let me show you the law of the No, no, you can't. You have spoken. Please let him finish. She was only looking for clarification. No, no, let me finish. Please let him finish. No, no, let me finish. done. No, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm saying that. Two minutes. I'm saying that. Next time when you do this, so don't do this. So you want to order one one four? Please, no, no, no. They are Let questioning. No, they are questioning it is my the time. authority. What I'm saying it wasn't is that. your no, time. No, 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 hold on. It's my you, time. I asked him a question. I just want him to clarify. She wants to know the back. time to which that we you worked, worked out. out. And That's I'm telling very you essential. that we worked out of the discretion that, in our estimation, was illegal to have been exercised by the Speaker of Parliament. That some other members who are supposed to be given the privileges as members of parliament, i.e. the vice president, ministers of state, deputy ministers, who are supposed to be part of proceedings of parliament. Forgive but, me if I'm but, wrong, but our privileges rights is privileged law. I have educated him. He still doesn't I'm, want to I'm get educated. That, I'm I've quoted that the law the that privileges when you go for that a division, you can, you don't you have, can, if you're you not a member of parliament, you, your head cannot be counted. You can't where, be counted. Where, 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 where is he saying that? Where? Okay. I'm not I mean, saying that okay, so we have five you. minutes. I'm not saying that we No, let me say, but I'm saying we have, I'm saying that they don't have, see, when you come to the assembly, I'm a member of parliament. When I go to the assembly, I don't have a voting right. But when they are coming to vote, the MCE or the prime, uh, the presiding member cannot sack me a member of parliament. Are you using the assembly? Of course, it is, the, it is the same. No, it hold is on. not the same. No, hold on. Please. It, it doesn't is. seem like Please. it's no, the no, same. No, no, no. Let me tell you why it is the Vincent, same. Vincent, Vincent. The, the fact that it is the same Vincent. is that. No, hold on. Let me, let me make these submissions. No. I'm saying that. I'm saying that. <sighs> it is almost the same because I can participate in the moral every... standing oh, orders. Hold on. I know this, this I can participate in everything that is happening at the assembly. But there are I don't have provisions. a voting right. Okay, I have oh, one question. The fact that I don't have a voting right at the assembly doesn't mean that when they are going to vote, they should sack me for I have one meeting. question for both of you. The presence of Ken Ophiriata. One I'm second. You can submission. answer this question and then continue. The presence of the Minister of Finance in the chamber, he did not have a vote. Did it matter if he was there or not? It's his budget. He came to ask the speaker. But, but, but in that moment, Look what that. what you were voting on, it was he. But would he have had a you vote? You are doing common Could sense. Could he have I'm said something? That, um, you are doing common sense. I am I'm doing common sense yes, because I'm, I'm speaking that. for Ghanaians. So that. a lot the of law. big English the and law. the law doesn't answer the question it, that it does. you went it to does. Parliament to do something, and now the conversation has become about a rule of law. Yeah, but the conversation has become about the minister of finance was there, so we are working out but he doesn't have a vote so does it matter if he's the there or not he have because vote, Ghanaians are waiting for away. you to decide on a budget and now we're here this morning discussing that the minister of finance wasn't here there was division there was this there was this do you get this I'm an I'm an ordinary Ghanaian I'm not a lawyer I'm not a member of parliament I just want this to go through. What will it take for the NDC and the MPP to find common ground so that we can find a budget that works for the people of Ghana? This, you have five minutes. That's all the time that we have. So I need both of you to answer this for me. Well, what would it take for the two of you and your parties to find common ground so we can move on for the good of the average, commonsensical Ghanaian? Well, I am always telling you that, yes, you can have that commonsensical analysis. But who... In this country, does he know Ken Oforiata? Which among, which among us, oh, members God. of parliament, does he know Ken Oforiata? It is proper to call them out, and especially the speaker, that it was not right to call them out of the chamber at that time. Because I am saying that, yes, he needs not partake in the voting, but if you are going to do head count, are you telling me that if Ken Oforiata stands on his feet for, for him to be counted, we won't see <laughs> okay. Is that, is, is that the argument? We won't see. The constitution says that we are supposed to accord him with all the privileges. As a member of parliament, he has the right to partake in all the proceedings of parliament. He is almost like a member of parliament, uh, but cannot vote. So, what so if he cannot say? vote, so I'm just saying that mm -hmm. what happened on Friday was putting something on nothing. It was illegal. We have to come back to the floor of the house as members of parliament, majority and minority. To be able to, as it were, find a common ground. If they want to be a hard negotiator, the, um, the majority side also want to be a hard negotiator. We won't get there. There should be some amount of compromise. And if they agree that indeed they did not have the numbers, as the standing orders clearly says, that you need one half, which they didn't have. 138. You, you, don't, okay. you don't need 
anybody or a suit to tell you that they did not have the 138. Okay. No, they didn't have it. So tomorrow, but if they tomorrow, agree, hopefully, then it means that there should be a way for us to deal with this matter. So tomorrow, hopefully, there will be enough members. So, question. Can I? You have, can asked I, you have No, 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 no. You have already I'm asked the question. You are taking my time, please. <laughs> You are, you are eating away my I'm time. I'm giving you the time. No. I also want you to clarify. No, he has impugned the authority of the speaker to call for a division and ask the members of the house to leave. I really want us to move on in this no, conversation. No, we have to clarify that. Because I feel like that. tomorrow no, all of that will be clarified. Hold on, my dear. Let but me what the Ghanaian cares about, Mr. My, my, is, is my, whether my you dear, are going my to dear, come my to dear, some my sort dear, of I consensus or join soon news enough. regularly. Yes, every week. And I'm here yes, watching you when so you do. So, please. Let's, but let's, I really need you to answer for I, me. I will answer you. Okay. He has said certain things. Said I need to, you, you I need to, your questions. I need to impeach the things he has Okay, said. after you're done impeaching, will you answer that I will for answer. me? Answer the, the five hoops. points I will, that I will, the NDC... I will answer you. Okay, you sure. You have hoops. about three minutes. In, in order 114, mm -hmm. in the case of a division, Mr. Speaker shall direct that the lobbies be cleared and upon such direction, being given, being given, the division shall... Division bells shall be rung for one minute. After a lapse of two minutes from, from this direction, he shall put the question, and Mr. Speaker shall declare whether, in his opinion, the eyes or the nose have it. If his opinion is again opposed, he shall announce the names of two tellers, for the eyes and two for the nose, and shall direct that a division be held. Now, he says that they moved out after a division has been called. No, I never said that. Please. You, you walked out after you call for the division. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm Absolutely. saying that when you call for a division and you walk out, based on the you walk out on your right huh? to participate in the vote. Uh, so okay, that's the the vote so that has been taken. You're losing the facts. So you, you have come here and said things based on not law. Just uh, you, You're asking that I've quoted the who doesn't I've know Foriata in this country. Is that the law? The law Covering the procedure the of parliament. It has privileges in the because, house. Because Oforiata is known, it should sit in parliament to participate in a voice vote. No, I never said you, so. Ah, four, I never said four so. ministers of state sat among the MPP members of parliament before the, the, the year's vote was taken. And I said, and they said the colleagues were also in the house. Who said, you understand? Said no. If you are talking about Sio Dunkertia, then talk about the journalists too. But that's what we are saying. You understand? So and it is, clear, it is a most relevant point you are making. Clear please, the please, I've been quiet. Let me finish. So, so they are making a zero-sum argument. The MPP outsmarted themselves into damnation in this matter. And let me address your question. They must eat a humble pie. Mm -hmm. And I advised them last week that they, they should have spent this weekend drafting a new budget. It would have served their purpose. If they think that tomorrow they will come and bastardize the procedure in parliament, they are in, they are in for it. You know why? Even the motion they want to file tomorrow, they will need notice. Pursuant to order 79, you need to give notice that you want to file a motion. There are some notices that you may not Hold need. on. Oh, uh -huh. You are yeah. talking of exceptions. Uh -huh. Those that. exceptions, you have to be granted by the House. We'll vote on that. Pursuant to order 80 also, you need a 40 minimum notice of 48 hours. So they should stop talking oh, hot air outside and on radio and come to Parliament. The procedure, the law is here. They should stop blowing hot air and come and talk. As for the procedure, now we will play by the rules. Every variation of order of business will be voting on it. If they think that they can take us for granted, they are not humble enough to say that, look, we, we err, and that we want to, we acknowledge that we err. And so let's sit down and do this. Then they are running their own government aground. That cannot be the fault of the of, of, of the opposition at all. According to okay, so I'll give you the chance to um, give us your your final words before you gave him final words. I, I'm no, supposed to give my final question. words. So I, I would Aye, like. I would, oh no! So when you see you see how difficult this is. When I, I say this, this one says this. No, it's not difficult. All that I want to say is that the Ghanaian people should know and understand that indeed the NDC sought to put something on nothing. And so if um, the headlines has it that uh, the budget has been rejected, it was done 
on an illegality, mm -hmm. and so um, it cannot stand. As you rightly said, God willing tomorrow, um, it is not as if we are afraid of the NDC. If you are calling us to come to the chamber because we are making noise in the media, as if we are afraid of the NDC, no. Ah, but if you are not afraid, you will walk out. <laughs> but I'm just saying that we will get to the house, yes, and debate the matters. Are you uh, going to be on time uh, tomorrow? Thank I'm you. going you to see, take time out you of spend six six to go and consult. We have, we have always been on time. But you see, what he failed to know is that if we have to bring a petition or file a motion on the floor of the house asking for more time to deliberate because of the points that they themselves raised during debate, i.e. the E-Levy and others, as a government, we needed to take a decision. Mm. And taking a decision means that we needed to do broader consultation. That is what reflected in the House of Parliament when we filed that motion that we need more time. It, it, is, it, is, not, it, is, it is not right to say that we deliberately decided, yeah, sure, we deliberately decided no, to be No, what you say is not correct. This is not the first time they will be amending a budget. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, when they omitted the voter regime from the budget, it didn't take them six hours to go and consult and a whole week to go and consult. A whole week. It was done expeditiously. So they should stop finding flimsiest of reasons for their Fox Spa show on Friday. Friday, they got tactics wrong, they got approach wrong. Emotionally, they were destabilized. According okay. to, according um, to let Dafia me Mapo, the co host. <laughs> let me say a very big thank you to Mr. You got Watson it wrong Nelson, on Friday. Dafia <laughs> MP for South Tai and Vincent Eko Isuman, MP for... Eko, um, Vincent Asifua. 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 My father will Sorry. come and deal with you. I apologize. <laughs> I will for urge you. you. For me to, for me I will to urge make you. sure that I had not heard, I had to do a quick double check of what the devil may care is. In fact, when you say somebody is a devil may care, all that, all that I'm saying is that the person relaxed and looked on for certain things to happen. It's okay. not an I think that on behalf of the Ghanaian people, the speaker was we would like to appeal well, well, to well, you I mean, if, if that tomorrow my brother, my brother when is you saying, get to parliament, please remember that you're doing this for us. Tell that to the and government. They have been really giving want, the power to exercise the executive really power. Wants, no, no. We really no, no, want a budget No, don't direct this at us. the minority. Tell the government to be responsible. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll be talking to the NSMQ champion for this year. We're crossing over to love.